How's it going pups? It's a canine and I'm a person who loves women. Animation is one of my favorite mediums and I love animated animals specifically. Not on some furry shit, okay? I love women so much that I'm actually gonna be toxic today and start ranking the most iconic women, the top of the pedestal, the most cherry-picked women ever. They are the most beautiful creatures in the world to the most devastatingly ugly as fuck characters okay the characters you don't even know existed you look at them and you're like oh my god i forgot you even existed because no one gives a fuck about you now before i start some of you might be questioning my legitimacy here and to those who don't believe i gotta say shut the fuck up okay as you can see here i have a tier list in front of me why is the tier list not bigger because i am the most important thing in the world okay i'm not like these other youtubers who put themselves in a small little corner acting like oh they're small and significant no i'm big is fuck i am egotistical is all hell i am the most imp important person in the world all right starting off with dory and i gotta say i'm a person who is scared of fish and dory and nemo and all that shit like i it didn't really resonate with me to be completely honest i think it's an amazing movie but you know as a kid i'm like oh, these fish kind of spooky scary you know what i mean <laughs> i don't know what that voice was but yeah anyway going past that i have to recognize that you know dory is one of a kind. She can't be replaced with a normal flounder. I don't know if that's the fucking fish's name. I'm not gonna look it up. Dory, super iconic. You can tell what the fuck she is from the get go. Like you can look at this blue fish and be like, oh, that's Dory because her personality seeks through. And also, um, she's just that girl, I guess. She is definitely going in iconic as hell, okay. All right, next up we have Jenna, this red dog, and I gotta say, she is an amazing design. A lot of you little kids, okay, you don't know who the fuck this is, and I get it, I get it. You were born in like the 2000s, 2005, and everything like that. Your baby is fuck, you don't get it. Your brains haven't fully developed yet. You don't know what's in the past. But let me tell you, this character is amazing. It comes from a movie called Balto, and Balto by itself, don't look at the sequels, don't look at the sequels, but Balto is an amazing movie on its own. She is the main love interest of the movie, and I gotta say, she is more than that. She is actually carrying the whole damn movie. Balto, Balto's design is like, you know, it's whatever. It's a gray wolf, and you know gray wolves aren't good designs. They're just like, they're whatever, they're, they're they're basic as hell, okay? Nobody's gonna like look at you and be like, wow, you're so fucking cool. I've never seen a character like you before. You know when you're just creating your character in any type of like RPG or MMO? That is basically Balto. Balto shines more through his personality, but like looking at Balto straight up, he's just like, wow. Nobody fucking cares. Looking at Jenna firsthand, you can tell this character is super amazingly designed and actually cared for. When she tries to turn on another dog, <laughs> I don't know if I want to add that to the video. <laughs> when she tries to get another dog off her with very suggestive movements, okay. Um, she just like became a solidified character in the roster of women, of women. <laughs> she is 100% going up to iconic as hell. All right, next up is Dixie. Another character that y'all kids, y'all youngins, y'all know shit about. Y'all are so small. You got blue baby brains, what the fuck? This character released on Fox and the Hound 2, and I actually don't blame you if you don't know who this character is. Literally, the movie's just fucking trash it's forgettable the only reason you watch fox and the hound 2 is because of dixie dixie is amazing personality because it's ariba mcintyre and uh maybe mcintyre is it mcintyre or mcintyre one of the two i'm not stupid i promise but yeah looking at dixie's design absolutely stunning this is when disney was in their bag with character designs she's one of those rare characters that don't need clothes don't need anything in order to be iconic as hell which this character is iconic as hell do you see her hair her hair is like a cowgirl hat and it's it's beyond beautiful. This is immaculate character design and it deserves to be an iconic as hell. Okay, moving on to the last unicorn. And I know a lot of you people don't know who the last unicorn is. You 2000, 2005 babies, I get it. You don't need to cry no more because nobody really knows who this character is. She came out sometime during like the 1990s, I'm more than sure. And um, I gotta say she's a very, she's a very, very good design. Think about how many unicorns you know. All right, now tell me how many white unicorns you know. 
That's right, only one, because this is the last unicorn! I don't even need to say fucking anything else. This character is iconic as hell. And I gotta say, that profile picture I used for that, absolutely pissed. I don't know what the fuck I'm on. All right, coming up the bat, we got the most beautiful mom in the fucking world. And I gotta say, if I was a furry, if I was a fur- Let me, let me be a little more realistic now, okay? You take off all of her clothes, not in a weird way, not in a weird way, I know that sounds sus as hell. Let me, let me backtrack that real quick. You take off all of her clothes and you're left with a basic pig. No real distinction from all the other pigs, okay? You can say she got curves, you can say she got a fat ass, which I, I can't lie, she does have a fat ass in one of the scenes where like she's about to jump off and I think it's like in scene two, she like <laughs> flops down on the ground. But yeah, otherwise she has no real distinction. She has little freckles on her face, but like that's not enough. I think if I have to be completely honest, She's forgettable. Woo! We are moving on to the main villain of Zootopia. Sorry for spoilers, the movie's been out for six, seven fucking years. Shut the fuck up. Now I gotta say, this lamb also gives me a little bit of a mom energy and uh, she's very, very cute. And if, uh, <laughs> if I was a furry. But yeah, her personality is very, very amazing, I gotta say. But if we're talking about just looks, if I'm just looking at this character, Without the glass, well, oh, that's gonna be hard. I'm thinking about it and uh, glasses is a part of her character. Like, without her glasses, I don't know if she'll be able to see. So technically, would that be a part of her character? Like, I'm gonna count yes, okay. The glasses do make her a little bit distinct, but in general, she's kind of like just a normal lamb. She can blend in with a lot of the other characters. There's not too much really stand out about her. So I gotta be real, even though I love this character to death, I gotta be real, put her in the, yeah, you're fine tier. Moving up next is Kiara. And I gotta say, Kiara, I love her to death, but she's kinda mad. She comes from The Lion King 2, and I gotta say, like, if you were just looking at her, you might not be able to tell if she was Nala or another one of the lionesses. I'm gonna be completely real. If these were animals, I'd be racist as fuck, but I gotta say, I'm not racist, okay? I'm just spitting a little bit of the facts, okay? These aren't real people. They would never be real people. They are fictional characters. They are animals, okay? If they were like humans, I'd be like, okay, well, I'm racist as fuck, but they're animals, so I can be more realistic, okay? They're, they're, they're not standing out. They're not, like, getting any standing ovations. Her personality's kind of whatever and honestly she's not standing out she, she's going right there i'm sorry boo boo next up we got feline okay felice nabi dunn that is not her name she's a character from bambi 2 and actually bambi 1 but she's a little grown up in bambi 1 so i use the bambi 2 because in bambi 2 she's she's cuter okay she's just way cuter bambi 2 is actually the sweetest movie and feline is just absolutely adorable i love her throughout the movie and if it wasn't for her big blue eyes, she kind of blend in with the rest of the year. I'm not gonna front. Nothing really special about her design. Her personality carries a lot of her character, and I gotta say, <sighs> it ain't enough for me. We forgot about you, honey. Who the fuck is this? I know who it is. It's um a character from The Secret of Nymph. Girl from A. Hey. Hey, hey, it ain't like that. I don't go on Twitter. This is not what it looks like. Miss Brivsby, oh my fucking God. She is a cutie. She is an absolute cutie. Is she an icon? Ha. Ha. I don't, I don't think she is an icon. I'm gonna be completely real. Like, I love this character to death as I forgot her name. Can I really say that? I don't know. I don't think this character is too iconic. You take away her red coat, like, it's, it's just a mouse. It's just a mouse, maybe a rat. I don't know which one of the two. I think it's a mouse. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, absolutely. She's, she's forgettable. She's beyond forgettable. Now this character, I'ma catch a lot of flack for it and I don't give a fuck, okay? I am not a pussy with my opinions. I say it how it is. Portia, you take off all of her clothes, not in the weird way, okay? Not in the weird way, but you take off all of her clothes, She's nothing, she's nobody. She's from Sing 2, and I gotta say, she's a very fun character in the movie. 
Is that, can I even say that? I'm gonna be completely honest. You take off all of her clothes, she ain't shit. She ain't nobody. She's a basically um, a starting MMO character of a game. I'm sorry, she ain't shit. Now for the lamb, I did make an excuse for the lamb, but you know, shades, shades don't really help you see. They actually hinder your vision as it blocks the sun. So therefore, I'ma block her sun and let her not shine and well, she's in that tier now. I was gonna say in a more dramatic fashion, but uh, this is just how it is. Now I'm gonna get the rest of the character so I can actually finish this shit. All right, going into the second half, which is way more than the half to be completely honest, we have Giselle from Open Season, okay. I'll be completely honest. Giselle is a background character. She ain't shit. She ain't never gonna be shit, like real talk. I love her, but she's a fucking idiot for going for Elliot. Like, what the fuck? How do you fall in love with someone so idiotic and so ugly as fuck, like real shit? There's nothing wrong with being a virgin, but when you're Elliot, literally, that's the biggest insult. For dating an L of a man, you get a L of a placement, my girl. <laughs> Next up, we got a character from Spirit. She's the lady horse and her name is not in Important. I'm gonna be completely honest. I never really seen spirit. It's been on my agenda for the longest time But I've never really seen spirit. I'm so sorry. But looking at her right here. She she's just a horse She's not anything too special. Okay So sorry, but we forgot about you, honey. Miss Bianca is one of the most beautiful characters ever created She is one of the first mice to actually do it like none other. Now, if you take off all of her clothing and everything like that, she's she's kind of nothing, I'll admit. She's kind of nothing. But, I don't know what about her. She's iconic. Loki, I'm bullshitting a little bit, but at the same time, I'm not bullshitting. I'm spitting facts. This character is iconic as hell. <laughs> What the fuck? Why do I have two Biancas? Okay, well, you're double iconic. That's how fucking good you are, apparently. <laughs> Jor Jetta from Oliver and Company. This character. No, 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 no. Let me, let me show you one scene, and that's all you need to know. Now, what does this mean? I don't know what it means. I don't gotta explain myself. I don't gotta explain myself. I don't gotta explain myself. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. Gadget from Chippendale Rescue Rangers. This character was honestly nothing compared to Bianca. Honestly, you shouldn't compare women to each other. Women are their own sort of like beings. They're amazing creations by God. But I'm gonna compare her to Bianca and Bianca just does it better. So realistically, you're just fine. Okay, now in our lives, we all have one character that defines who we are as a person. We have one character that is, it, it rises above the occasion and no one can really understand and you don't really need to explain yourself in the process. You can just say, hey, this character belongs in iconic tier. You wanna know why? Because fuck you, that's why, okay? And I gotta say, this is one of those characters. Fuck off. Angela from Shark Tales. Is it Angela? No, it's fucking Lola. What? I don't know. The design is kind of unique. Like, I hate the fuck out of Shark Tales, but the design is kind of unique, if I have to be completely real. I don't know any other character that, like, stands out as well as her. The, the movie and her herself might not be the best depiction of Iconic, but... She kind of, she looks like no one else. I'm gonna be completely honest. She's, she's kind of iconic. She's, she's at the lower end, but you know, she's kind of iconic. We got another character from Sing, Suka Lane. I ain't even a furry. I ain't even on that type of timing, but realistically, she kind of hot low key. If I was in that universe, I would hold her hand. I would take her out to dinner. I would platonically kiss her hand that's about it i'm sorry nothing else because we ain't going into that fucked up territory okay we we need to settle down as a person as a community i am not one of those youtubers who are just like oh woman character i'm a fuck it <laughs> that ain't me and i'm not on that type of time okay she's just a beautiful character and honestly i think is there another character that doesn't like her is there another character that doesn't like her i i think not 
I think she is the one and only. I am the one, don't need a gun. Here from The Lion King, and I gotta say, this character. I, I guess I have the same argument as like Nala, as uh, Kiara. These characters have nothing to really stand out from besides the lighting if you take away the lighting in their eyes which like they look like they have cancer i don't know why but if you take away all that lighting she ain't shit she ain't nobody she ain't doing nothing to nobody like i don't even know how she got pregnant for real if i was scar i'd be like who the fuck are you bitch you ain't nobody relevant why the fuck am i even dating you why am i dating a lying at all nah i love her personality she slays but she's not iconic by looks you know there comes a time in every person's life to where they have to look deep inside themselves and be like you get a hall pass okay you can say this character is very unique very iconic and very amazing and i know i already gave myself that sort of hall pass but at the end of the day we need to think to ourselves is this character really iconic and at the end of the day you don't need any explanation lady is iconic as fuck and anybody else who argues any different is literally stupid i'm sorry Vitani from lion king 2 she's another lion i'm sorry these lions kind of blend together like she's she's got a little something going in the front like she's she's, she's an okay design but she ain't nothing special like she ain't getting a fucking oscar let's be real on the oscar she's getting is the one from shark tales miss kitty from five goes west this character is amazing i don't give a fuck when i was super 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 young i had a crush on this character this character was pretty as all hell i wanted to be like her she was she was slaying that shit, girl. She's one of the main reasons I watched this movie. Overall, Five of Goes West is a pretty fun movie, like, and it has it has some decent singing, some decent songs in there. It's nothing like memorable or anything like that. They're just decent. They're fun, and um, Miss Kitty is pretty. And being pretty, Kitty, you know, she's absolutely icon. She's fine. She's fine. She's not realistically iconic, okay? A lot of gray cats have entered this space. I was about to say the gaming space. That's not it. A lot of characters have entered this sort of space, and um, she's just a gray cat at the end of the day. You strip down her clothes. She's just a gray cat, and there's nothing really distinct or separating her from the others. Angel from Lady and the Tramp 2, okay? This character, nothing real special about this character, but I have to say... I don't think anybody's ever drawn a Pomeranian. She isn't really iconic, but at the same time, she kind of is because nobody else, as far as I'm aware, has drawn a Pomeranian like this. Also, she's very bitchy, she's very assertive, and I kind of fuck with that, okay? Not saying that personality, I'm not basing the shit off of personality, even though it does play a part in their character, but looking at her, she, she like radiates the bitchiness, the sassiness, so, I don't know. I think the only realistic place I can put her is, yeah, you're fine, because, She's not iconic, but at the same time, she kind of is iconic because nobody else has drawn a Pomeranian before. So there she goes. Jewel from Rio. This is a fucking hard one. <sighs> Look deep inside yourself, okay? Look past all your biases, which you can't look past your biases no matter who the fuck you are so, so, so come here come here come here i'm gonna show you one scene and you're gonna be the judge that's all i gotta say dude i'm gonna be completely honest I don't like Judy Hobbs. She is a nobody. I don't care what type of flack I'm gonna get, but realistically, Judy Hobbs is just a bunny with a cop costume. She's a person who has gaslighted Nick. Literally a person who was just trying to make an honest living. It might not been a, and might not have been like the best thing ever, but like Nick was literally just chilling and Judy was just gaslighting the fuck out of him and kind of abusing her police power if you see yourself in this character you need to seek mental help because you're trying to abuse being a police officer and making the other police officers look bad which is not hard to do but like at the end of the day 
you know, it is what it is. <laughs> She's a girl cop on top of all that shit. Like, you could have been doing so much better, girly. You could have been representing the good side of police. But no, you had to go to the corrupt side, abusing your police powers, and then you expect me to care for you? No! Get your ass in that fucking bottom tier! I don't know if I said this before, but like, if you take away the clothes, she's just a bunny. She's literally a basic bunny. There's nothing stand out about her. So that is my reasoning. You can shut the fuck up now. All right, Lola Bunny, the character that everybody's horny for, except for me. I gotta say, I get it. I get why people were horny for her, but when I was a kid, I don't think I was that horny for her. I didn't even want to be here. Like, I don't know, she didn't really do anything for me. Like, Lola Bunny herself, like, she's she's in a way distinct, but she only really got a personality later on throughout the Looney Tunes show, like, um, the newer one. I don't know what the fuck it's called, but like, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm kind of puzzled on what I want to do here. I think, I think realistically, I'm gonna put her as, yeah, you're fine. You are very, you're, you're kind of iconic, but there's like two eras of you. Like there's an era to where you're over sexualized and then there's an era to where you actually have a personality and you're your own character. And I don't know. I don't think any of that is iconic realistically, except for like, you know, the personality one that's iconic as fuck, but like, we can't really talk about that without the over, ah, over sexualization. So. Okay, we finally get to the character I've been talking about for like four characters now. <laughs> Nala from The Lion King is the character I think that started it all, if I gotta be completely honest. She's literally just a lion and right in this image she's giving uh, bedroom eyes for whatever reason. But um, anyway, looking past that, looking past Disney's weird fetishes, she's a character that... That kind of did it first. She's like one of, this is hard, it's hard, it's hard. She's a character that's forgettable, but at the same time, very iconic because she's one of the first lions to ever do it. For that statement alone, I don't think I can put her in iconic tier, but I can put her as mid. I think that's respectable. Paradita, Paradita, I don't, I don't know what the fuck to call her, Para. Tata is like, shit! <laughs> Paradita is basically on the same level as some of these other characters to where like, she's not really iconic, she's a Dalmatian, but, you know, she's kind of one of the first characters who ever done it. Like, she's not the prettiest woman on the runway, but like, she kind of works it very well and she gets a place above, a little bit above the rest. Also, I don't think there's many Dalmatians really in anime. I think there's a, there's, there's a decent amount, like five maybe. There's literally 101 Dalmatians in the fucking movie. I don't know, she's kind of like the first one to do it, so like she gets in there, yeah, you're fine. All right, a character nobody fucking knows. This is Sagwa, and she is from a PBS show called Sagwa, the Chinese cat or something like that. I want to say I think it was about learning Chinese, but I'm not too completely sure. Anyway, going past that, looking at her design, Fuck. If you take away the, the scarf, the bib, I don't know, little baby ass, little fucking kindergartner ass, grow the fuck up, you stupid ass kitten. Yeah, nah, like, if you take away the bib, she ain't shit. I gotta say, this is a forgettable character, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't even know her in the first place, so yeah, yeah I'm not, we're not missing anything. The main six, and I'm talking about all of them because Realistically, they're all iconic. I, if I have to be completely real, Lauren Faust made very good designs. These characters are super iconic. I don't know if that's just me being real or if that's Bronies fucking shoving this shit down my throat in various good and bad ways. Very, very bad ways. I don't know if it's that, but like, I think these characters are way past a status to where like they're fine you know they're they're kind of iconic if i have to be completely real i don't like the show but i can give kudos to lauren frost okay she made some good shit it gets it gets to go there fucking god dandy cheeked up on a fucking thursday to be completely honest she's just a squirrel but like i think the character design like the sort of uh writing style what the f drawing style that she's sort of in kind of carries her a little bit and i think she gets to slip a little bit, a little bit. I, 
lot of tears. I gotta be completely real. I don't know if anybody heard that, but like I said, she kind of got a slip in the iconic tear. The duck from Balto 2. Her name is Stella, and if you don't know what Balto 2 is, I really don't blame you. The only reason you watch Balto 2 is because you're a furry. I wish, I wish I was lying, but like realistically, there, there's nothing, there's nothing good about Balto 2. Like, I guess if you like curves and over sexualized characters and kid shows, which is kind of weird, Balto 2 is exactly for you. Stella is exactly for you. They decided to give Boris the duck from Balto a fucking love interest, and um, she's. She's shaking quite a bit. I know I've said this a million times, but I'm absolutely fine with like sexual characters. It's just in a kid show, I don't know, dude. I don't fuck with that. Not saying like boobs are like very curvy characters are like sexual in any sense, but like this is, come on, this is way past that. This is actually a sexualized character. But if I gotta be completely real, she's one of the only ducks that look like this. I mean, you see her? She looks like she has like, you know, the Skrillex cut. She look like she about to drop Scary Monsters Night nice Sprites, fucking Bangarang, fucking first of the year, all that fucking dubstep. She look like she fucking created it. She looking like the gayest duck as hell. She look like she plows. A lot of women. I know she's straight. Okay, I know she's straight in the movies, but like, not all movies are nonfiction. Yeah, right where you belong, girly. You, you got it. You got it. Vixie from Fox and the Hound too. Um, I don't think I really need to explain much about this character. Like, I it's, it's some of the shit I've already said before. Like, yeah, you're fine. Like, you're not you're not iconic, but at the same time, you're one of the first characters to ever do it like that so I gotta give respect where respect is due oh my god moving on to one of my favorite characters of all time Wama Wink if you've not seen Centaur World you need to fucking go see it right the fuck now it is a very crazy very it's a wild ride if I have to be completely honest Wama Wink is one of my favorite characters and it's a character that I've never seen done before she's a centaur like llama or a alpaca something like that and um she is absolutely fucking amazing her design of pink on a darker pink i think that shit kind of goes she kind of slays she also shoots little babies out of her hooves and i know i sound stupid as fuck for saying that but that's how she does it and realistically mm, ain't nobody do it like her dude i don't i don't know who the fuck this character is like like yeah i know what this character is but i I haven't really seen Robin Hood. It was not something that captured me as a kid. So I don't really know this character's name. Oh, her name is Maid Mandarin? No, Maid Marion. Marion? Yeah, Marion. Yeah, um, I don't know. She's not really the greatest design. Like you take up all her clothes, she's basically like, Vixie, but not as cool. Gidget from Secret Life of Pets. I know I was talking about like Angel. I was hyping up Angel being like one of the only Pomeranians. This is one of the only other Pomeranians. <laughs> and Gidget is more like distinct from Angel, okay? She's more fluffy. She's more like pure Pomeranian, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Angel's like mixed or something like that. But Gidget, I love the fuck out of Gidget. I think Gidget's a little fluff ball. She's so fluffy. I think she's a normal ass design, but you know, she's kind of iconic because nobody else has done it like her. I'm just being completely real. Do you know how many characters that look like her? Actually zero, okay? People gonna be mad as fuck at this tier list, but I don't give a fuck, this is just facts. So Miss Piggy from the Muppets. I don't need to say anything else. A lot of people thirst over this fucking puppet. I don't know why. I'm not one of those people, but like I can respect real, okay? This character is amazing. 
uh, very iconic. I don't need to say much else. The lady cat from Cats Don't Dance, which I think her name is Sawyer. I don't think I see too many like white cats in animation. It's mainly like black cats or brown cats, like stuff like that. And I think the way she's designed, she kind of like stands out because of the fucking little hair truffle she's got going on, her little bangs. Other than that, I think the way she's stylized, I think she's stylized in a very good fashion. So I... I might get hate for this, but I don't give a fuck. I'm not pussy, okay? She's iconic. Okay, so I don't know where the fuck Leafy went, but Leafy would be an iconic character. I think that character in general is just super beautiful and super well designed. Beyond the movie, it's it's iconic. But yeah, this is gonna be my iconic tier list, okay? If you hate me, argue with your dog. I already done told you, okay? Looking throughout this tier list, I'm actually very content with what I put in here. I think I have amazing selection of iconic characters, and also I think I have an amazing selection of characters that nobody gives a fuck about. I gave some briefer summaries on some of the characters that were, I guess, repetitive. Not necessarily repetitive, but like, you know, I already kind of set a description for, just replace the character. And some characters I just really didn't give a fuck about, like real talk, I don't really give a fuck about Judy Hobbs. I, I hate that bitch. Burn in hell. Yeah, this is my list. I don't know if I did my intro or my outro, whatever the fuck I'm gonna call it, a mid-tro. I should just put it in the mid just for funnies. Yeah, I don't know if I did that. How's it going, pups? It's a canine and I'm 